Hey guys, Pam here with Craft How, and I've got another DIY on demand for you. Today we're going to be designing an invitation. I had a request for a tutorial on how to do this about a week ago, and I have finally gotten a chance to do this for you guys. So this is going to be an invitation that can be sent out digitally, or it can be saved as a printable file that you can take to a print shop like Walgreens or Sam's Club uh, or Walmart, whatever it is that you like to use and get printed out and actually send out as a photo invitation. So without further ado, let's get started. And we are going to start by setting up our mat so that we know that our printing area is going to be the appropriate size for the invitation we're going to create. In this case, we are going to make an invitation that is five by seven. So you're gonna go into your page setup and set your width and your height so that it matches the size of what you want your finished invitation to be. Again, in this case, we're doing five by seven. And what this does is it tells the software that this is the only thing that I want to print out when you're actually going to print. Uh, it, if you left this as 12 by 12 or whatever size you used last for your last project, it's going to select that entire area rather than just the 5 by 7 uh, or say 8 by 10, whatever it is that you want for your specific project size. So again, we're going to do a 5 by 7 in landscape, so 7 width by 5 height. Now what we need to do is create a border so that we know how everything is going to be framed and I am just going to draw a rectangle it doesn't matter because we are going to set the size here in our transform window and we want the width to be again 7 and the height to be 5 just like what our invitation is and just because I like everything to be all neat and squared and centered doesn't really matter too much this early on because it's all going to shift around. If you use the center tool that looks like this, it's going to center everything to the center of your project area. Uh, now what we want to do is, in this case, the invitation is a black and white photo with a translucent cell over the top of it with our information. So we need a photo. And the photo that I used is from a source called Pixbay, which is here. And most of the photos that are on this website are free for commercial use with no attribution necessary. So I just went to the website, typed in graduation, and found one that kind of matched what I was looking to do. And to save that into your computer, you just choose to download it and then save it wherever you want to put it, like your desktop or any specific folder. You can go to File and you can do Merge, and that will open up your File Explorer. In this case, I already had it open, so I'm just going to paste it in. Now it's a little bit smaller, but the resolution of the photo was pretty high, so it can handle being blown up a little bit. So I'm just going to resize it so that it is bigger than my invitation area is going to be. I'm going to send it to the back so that I can see this red border that we made earlier in front of it to help me frame my photo the way that I want it to appear on my invitation. So I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And what I'm also going to do here, let me move this guy a little further away. Okay. What I'm also going to do is you want to make sure that you do not set the photo to exactly the size of your image. You want to have something called a bleed area, which is a space between the border of your photo edge and the actual, like wherever your color or your picture or whatever it is ends. Um, that will make sure that the file saves in such a way that it will print edge to edge when you have them printed rather than having like a white gap, a white border around the edges just in case your print area is smaller than your invitation area. So what I'm going to do to create that bleed is I'm going to select my 5 by 7 red border here. I'm going to go into my offset tool and I am going to, let's see, let's delete that one. Here we go. Silhouette sometimes automatically applies offsets and it like defaults to uh, 0.125, but I don't want something quite that big. I think I'm going to go with like 0.8. I 
there we go, apply. And what I like to do whenever I do any kind of offset and some, or anything like that that's going to be a reference line, I like to change the color just so that I know which line I'm selecting when I'm working on it. All right, the next thing we're going to do is frame our photo. So like there's a little bit of a face edge here with the nose, so I don't want that kind of partial image there. And now I'm just going in and adjusting it so that the whole photo is outside of the blue line. And now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select my blue line, hold shift and select my photo, object, modify, crop. And that is going to treat my blue line like a cookie cutter and cut that exact shape out of my photo. And the reason that I did it this way is so that the photo is exactly scaled, you know, slightly larger than my invitation size, so that even if I move it off to the side and move this here, if I select both of those items and center them, they're always going to be even and it's always going to be framed the same way that I wanted it to be. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is create that little internal tile here, and that one's really easy to do. We just go to our shape tool, our drawing tool. I'm gonna choose a rounded rectangle for that one, and I am just going to draw a rectangle about the size that I want it. I'm going to fill it with white, and I am going to go into my fill and increase the transparency to where it stands out enough, but I can kind of still see the image behind it. There we go. Now, these lines, they have no thickness. If you go into the line style, you can see that it's a zero point thickness here. So if we were to print this, it wouldn't print. You wouldn't see anything. It would just be a blank box, or I'm sorry, that you would see the translucency and you would see the photo, but you wouldn't see any of the red lines because they have no thickness. The, the software can't see them. Uh, but what we want to do is to create a border around this. So I'm going to change my line color to black. Now even though it's black here, if I were to print this, it would just be an invisible line because again, it has no thickness. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a border and make sure that our line is visible by increasing the thickness right here. So now you can see that that has a very defined border. And really guys, this is all it is. This is your entire background, so you're pretty much done with that. We didn't do any kind of crazy layering or slicing. Uh, it really just comes down now to creating the fonts and things that you want to put on it. So you want to design the layout of it. Uh, in this case, I used these three fonts. Um, I wanted something kind of skinny. Let's move all these to the front. Move to the front. And one thing that I will point out, let's get these on here. So these are the font names uh, of the fonts that I use. Let me zoom in again here on the invitation over here. Um, and they're all uh, commercial use fonts as well. And you'll see here, this one has the blue grammar line underneath it. That will print if you save it as a JPEG, which is what we're gonna do with uh, Business Edition here in just a minute. Um, so you wanna make sure that that's not on there. So the best way to do that is you're going to hold Control and click on this. It's gonna create a copy, oops. Control, copy, oh, I'm sorry, not control, alt. Oh, it's muscle memory, you guys. I don't look at the keyboard when I do this anymore. You wanna hold alt and your cursor will change. Click on this and it'll drag a copy away. So this is still an editable file. So if we ever need to change the font or change the name, maybe we spelled the name wrong, heaven forbid, or something like that, it happens, um, then we'll be able to go back and adjust that. So we wanna make sure that we have a version available that is non-destructive. It's, it's something that we can go back and change and play with if we need to. But on the actual image that we're going to be printing, now that we have that set aside, we know what font we used and everything, you can go on to this one here and you can convert this to a path and that will get rid of that blue grammar line. However, it is no longer editable. So it is a picture now instead of a text box. So just be aware that when you do that, it is a, it's considered a destructive change and you will not be able to go back in and modify that um, text anymore. 
So I'm going to take both of these, I'm going to put them down like that. I'm holding shift and selecting multiple items and I am going to center all of those on each other. And then the last thing is to make this little divider here. It's just another rectangle. So we go in and we make a long skinny rectangle, fill it with black and change our line color to black or invisible, whichever one you want. And once again, select everything, center it vertically. There we go. And then we want to center it to our page. So that is our invitation. Um, basically, obviously, you would have your information all on here laid out however you want. You can add, you know, small graphics or images or silhouettes of, you know, anything really. <laughs> it's it's you're free to do what you like. Um, but the next thing you need to do is prepare it to actually print. So there are two ways to do that. If you have basic edition, um, most computers have the ability to install a virtual printer. So you want to go to file and print, and then you want to print it to a PDF. There are a few different programs like um, Bullzip. I use one sometimes called Cute PDF. Um, basically, you want to save it as a PDF, and then you'll be able to convert that PDF into an image that you can save and get printed off. Um, alternatively, with Business Edition, you can go File, Save As, Save to Hard Drive, and then you can save it as a JPEG. And when you go to do that, you'll see this box come up. And what you want to do is change your DPI, your dots per inch, to something like 300. That will give you a nice high resolution file so your image will be crisp and clear and it won't look fuzzy and then you'll save that. And when you open up the file, I saved it as graduationprintable.jpg, and this is the way my final file will look when I go to have it printed out. Um, I will throw a picture of the final invitation up along with uh, some other samples in just a second here on the other screen. So this was the final version once I had it printed out. I This is the uh, the display photo I made where I put all put them all on the ground to take a nice photo against the wood uh, for a background. So this was the actual, the way that that file actually printed out. Um, the sample that I had off to the left was my original digital file and then we just recreated one that was very similar to this um, just because, you know, when you remake something you're always going to tweak it a little bit. Um, but I have a few other designs that I did here. And if you guys have any questions about these styles, leave a comment below and let me know whether you want to see the uh, baby announcement, the birthday party, the uh, boy's birthday party. This is like a unicorn one. Boy's birthday party. Um, and this is like a holiday party invitation. Uh, let me know which of these you guys want to see next or if there's a different style that we can kind of work through and create together. If you guys have any questions, uh, about the tutorial, you can reach me on Facebook, facebook.com slash crafthow. Uh, my YouTube channel is listed here, which thank you guys so much for being a part of that today. Uh, and if you want to leave a comment below and let me know which of those videos you want to see next, I'm happy to get that recorded for you. Thanks so much for watching and happy crafting, guys. Have a great night.